Loving God, on this holy night, we seek your love and your grace, your spirit and your presence. Move, speak to our hearts, speak to our souls. We pray it in Christ's name, amen. Peter, in the Gospel of John, is very confused, very uncertain. He has, in uh, John's Gospel, just seen Jesus himself speak get washed by Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha. And in all of that was itself a little uncomfortable. Judas yelled at her, and Jesus talked back to Judas, and it was weird and strange, but at least that was understandable. After all, Mary's brother had just been raised back to life from the dead. And even if it was not socially acceptable, at least it made some sense that she might have gratitude and want to share it with Jesus and his followers in that moment. But now here they are. And in John's Gospel, it is not yet Passover. That's why John does not have communion scenes. Here they are having a meal after a busy week. And Jesus stops what they're doing and strips down to just a robe, just a towel, really, and then washes their feet. They're dirty, grimy, dust covered because there's no paved roads in those days' feet. Peter is confused and concerned and really doesn't know how he feels about this whole Jesus serving him thing. But Jesus had a point. And Jesus was trying to show love. The last bit is easy to forget. Because we know this story, and we know what is coming, the commandment that I will talk about, I promise you, in a little bit, that gives this night its name, the Monday, the commandment to love one another. But it's not one given just to give it. Jesus doesn't say to the disciples, hey, I've got a thing you to do, now go do it, and I'm not going to show you how to do it or give you any power empowering to do it. Instead, Jesus takes the time to show that love. That's what the act of washing the feet of the disciples is meant to show the disciples, that they are loved, that they are cared for, that Jesus wants to love them so much that he washes their feet. It says so in the text, that Jesus loved those who were his own, and because he knew he was leaving, he wanted to show them a chance to love. And so he does. He washes the feet of all the disciples in the room. Those unnamed ones that aren't even among the twelve that were probably also in that room. Those disciples that will flee from the garden in just a few chapters at the arrest of Jesus. He washes the feet of the one Jesus loved, the beloved disciple often thought to be John, the only one who in John's Gospel will be there at the cross. The only one in any of the Gospels that is there at the cross. He washes the feet of Judas, the one who literally in verse 30 would leave the room to go betray him. And by the way, he did that knowing in all the Gospels, but especially in John, Jesus knew what was happening. Because John's Jesus knows everything. John's Jesus is the Word made flesh, who is God incarnate in ways the other three Gospels only hint at. John's Jesus knows that Judas is about to go and betray him. And yet, Jesus washes his feet. And yet, Jesus shows him love. Jesus shows him love that maybe is saying to him, I know what you're about to do, but I love you anyway. And then there's Peter. <coughs> Peter, whom we have been following this Lenten season. Peter, who has ups and downs, moments where 
He has proclaimed the truth about Jesus and others where he's called Satan moments just to come in this story that we talked about last week where he will deny Jesus, where he will stand and say, I am not a follower. I am not with Jesus. Jesus knows that too. And yet he washes Peter's feet. He washes his feet and says, Peter, I love you. I know what you're about to do. But this is also the Peter we needed in the days to come to gather the disciples back together, to help lead them to be the rock upon which the church would stand. And so Peter washes his feet, showing him love. Maybe even my study notes for this sermon suggested, maybe even giving him pre-forgiveness. That when Peter is done mourning and weeping on Good Friday morning, he might know Christ's love was there even before he needed it. And that God's grace was there even before he knew he needed it. It's important to remember that the washing of feet was meant to be an act of love from Jesus. <coughs> because even though we weren't in that room 2,000 years ago, we are in that room. I suspect all of us, or most of us, have at different times in our lives been one of those disciples I mentioned. Maybe we're the ones who aren't even named. The work we do is anonymous and doing small things but we yearn to follow, we yearn to love. Well, Jesus, friends, washes our feet. Maybe we're the ones who are in leadership, but not the big ones. Where, you know, we, we might serve on church council, we only have one of the smaller roles, we might sit in a large number on the Sunday school board, or we just teach, just teach. I don't think we just teach, but we just teach Sunday school. We have some leadership, but not the big roles. We're not Peter or James or John. Friends, Jesus knows us. Jesus washes our feet. But sometimes, sometimes with Judas or Peter, sometimes as we, we fail, we intentionally fail, sometimes we don't do what we're called to do, we deny or even betray our Lord. Sometimes our sins catch up to us and we need that grace and forgiveness and mercy that we see at the cross, that we see in Jesus. And the friends, in those moments, know this. Jesus washes our feet. Jesus offers us love. The same grace and mercy he gave to Peter even before he was beaten by the denier. He gave to Judas even before he was the betrayer. Jesus gives to us. Jesus washes our feet and gives us love just as he did for Peter and Judas and all the disciples. Now if we stopped there for this sermon, that would be a good, a good message to hear. So if you were full up know you were loved by Jesus and that's enough. But I told you to get back to the other part. Because in verse 31, Jesus gives this night its name. In verse 31, Jesus says to the disciples, says to us, look, I've shown you love because I love you. You should know I love you and I care for you. I am your master and your Lord and I have washed your feet because you are not just my servants but my friends. But I'm giving you a charge, a command, to take this love you've been given, this love you've seen in me, this love that we have shared, take it and now go share it elsewhere. For friends, there are others out there that need their feet washed. People who are hungry, who are homeless, people who are hurting, who are suffering, 
people who don't know the love of Christ, people who don't know the love of anyone. And they need us in all the many ways we can, through the food pantry, through soup kitchens, through homeless shelters, through advocating for policies for the least of these, through simply being there for friends and neighbors and loved ones, for being there for strangers, being there in ways the Spirit leads us to, serving each other, serving the world, because we have been loved by Christ. I emphasize, it is not that we do the latter to earn the former. We are loved, full stop. Christ loves us, Christ has loved us, Christ will always love us. But we're invited and called, and this night they even commanded that we should take that love and use it to empower us to go out and love the world. We have followed Peter, and in many ways has appeared to us. Not right away, mind you. He still has to get through the denial and the cross and the confusion of Easter morning. But it's no mistake that those first disciples become the church. Those first disciples are the ones that share the good news. That Peter, who followed Jesus as Lord and friend and master, is one of only a handful of disciples that in the book of Acts will heal, will raise from the dead, will find ways to live out powerfully the love of others he learned at the feet of Jesus. I don't know that I have resurrection powers, but I can offer healing. I can offer grace. I can offer love. We can offer love. We love because Christ first loved us, is the song. We love because Christ has commanded us to love. And we can because Jesus washes our feet and gives us love. No matter who we are in the room. Thanks to God.